Ladies and gentlemen, AMD's Ryzen 8000 series processors, which of course will be powered by Zen 5, has had a couple of very interesting details courtesy of a roadmap which is leaked online. This roadmap actually details a lot of stuff concerning APUs, which excitingly also will incorporate Navi 3.5, which is also known as RDNA 3 Plus to its friends. And because of this, we also have some additional details what AMD will be incorporating with um, RDNA 4 as well. So let's begin with the roadmap, and I want to give courtesy credit to Harakars5719. I think they were the first person who actually put this roadmap into the public eye. Now, we'll go through just quickly the text on the slide, and then we'll start to provide some context. Um, new desktop socket AM5 launched in 2022 and will scale until 26. The infrastructure will support new CPU core and graphics upgrade on an annual canvas. AM5 CPUs will be available at 65 to 170 watts. And AMD will bring leading performance per watt advancing into various segments. Now, just quickly looking at the various years and what, of course, the technologies have incorporated. Zen 3 and Vega was for the Ryzen 5000 series. Then they went to the 7000 series for Zen 4 and Navi 3X. And then next year, as of the time I'm recording this, it will be Zen 5 and Navi 3.5. And again, this is for the AM5 socket. If you watched my video from a couple of days ago, well, actually, I recorded it several days ago, <laughs> but uh, I scheduled the upload. But um, there was uh, something I was discussing, and that was Sarlacc. We'll get more into the Zen 5 thing in a moment. But basically, Sarlacc is a halo skew based on Strix Point. And... The TLD, TLDR, excuse me, is it's going to be roughly on par with an RTX 3070. I've heard slightly different performance targets, and honestly, at this far out, it can change anyway, but roughly on par with an RTX 3070. So that's got 16 Zen 5 cores produced on either the 3 or 4 NM TSMC process. I'm not sure which is which. Potentially, in the mobile variants could be the 3 NM. And the 4NM could be desktop, I honestly do not know. RDNA 3 Plus or RDNA 3.5 if you prefer. 20 workgroup processors or 40 compute units. And with the information I had, it was 256 bit LPDDR5X. However, of course, with AM5, it would be, you know, more traditional memory. And of course, there will also be a chunk of Infinity Cache as well as an AI engine on their 20 cores. Now, this basically means that if this is actually true and it will be coming to AM5, and it seems from what I'm hearing as well as this roadmap implying it, that it is, it would basically mean that budget cards from NVIDIA, are, um, as well as AMD themselves and also Intel, although Intel have their own solutions, which I'll probably talk more about in another video, um, will be relatively pointless with, you know, a full system upgrade. Obviously, if you have something like a, you know, a 9900K or you've got like a Zen 3 processor or something like that, you will still need a graphics card. But if you're doing a full system build or system integrators, that type of thing, these are going to be very interesting and perhaps also very financially enticing. Uh, also, of course, you won't need as many, you know, things inside your case. It can be smaller. It's going to be very interesting. Now, I was told that Ryzen 8000, the CPUs based on Granite Ridge, those still have iGPUs, albeit, but of course, nowhere near to the level of performance. It's just a you know a couple of compute units, essentially. Those will go up to 170 watts, 16 cores, 32 threads. And it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see what AMD does here because there's a lot of potential. Um, I think that AMD, honestly, could make a crap ton of sales for these things. Like, it's... And I've mentioned this in several videos at this point, but basically discrete is going to be mid-range upwards, and then low end is going to be, well, APUs. Now, there is, of course, the obvious thing, the RTX 50 is going to launch next year. And so, of course, performance will obviously be redefined at that point. However, it's not like RTX 3070-ish level of performance is going to be slow, and it's going to be absolutely perfect for 1080p gaming, for example. We'll have to wait and see and see benchmarks and how it scales across memory bandwidth and other bits and pieces, but still, it is very intriguing. And this brings the obvious question, what the hell is RDNA 3.5 or RDNA 3 Plus? Now, I've actually mentioned a feature myself, which is 
something I heard from a source, but we also have a little bit more information here thanks to Kepler underscore L2 on Twitter. So I'm going to read his tweet verbatim. RDNA 3.5 slash GFX 11.5 is, as the name implies, an in-between gen which features both RDNA 3 and 4. It contains the new RDNA 4 SELU with support for FP32 instructions as well as improvements to the geometry engine, but it does not incorporate RDNA 4 features like the new scheduler and new improved RT cores. Now, one thing that's actually been quite confusing for one uh, for a lot of people, and I just want to mention it here, to my understanding, as well as what Kepler himself has said, this is not going to be released on desktop. So what I mean by that is a discrete GPU. These will be for APUs only. RDNA 3.5 will not have a discrete GPU which plugs into your PCI PCIe socket. It will instead plonk as an APU into, of course, your CPU socket. So basically, to, uh, from, what I, from what I know right now anyway, there will be no N31 refresh or anything like that. Basically, AMD are focusing purely on APUs and RDNA 4, and that is its real, you know, focus at this point for discrete. It wants to basically get out the rest of the uh, N3 lineup at some point or another. Obviously, the fact that it keeps cost, um, it keeps uh, reducing the price of its RDNA 2 cards, and they're selling really well at the moment, is also another reason that we've not seen N32. But the, the gist is that for the engineering efforts anyway, they've really focused on RDNA 4. And of course, I also think that this... Um, is pretty much the same with NVIDIA. There have been some rumours at the moment that uh, that uh, RTX 40 is going to be receiving a super variant. And I've actually spoken to some sources. I don't think that's happening. It was considered at one point or another, I think. That's according to a couple of sources that there were some plans. And I think I released a video about it. But at this stage, I do not think NVIDIA are going to release a refresh of RTX 40. Um, there probably will be additional cards, of course, which will come out. Of course, we're waiting for the, you know, RTX uh, 4050s. I would not be surprised if closer to, you know, the end of the year or something like that. That's not a leak, by the way. That's just me guessing um, that will be the release date for Titan. I have heard Titan is still in development, but I have no idea when the release date is for it. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what uh, what Nvidia decides to do. To be honest, with the uh, with its roadmap, it it at the moment is making money hand over fist in AI anyway, and obviously their graphics cards are just doing quite well. Um, there is a lot of complaints you could levy at Nvidia, for example, about VRAM, but ultimately they are doing pretty well. I don't think there's going to be a refresh. I'm also not quite sure how RDNA 4 is going to fit into things. I've also put out a leak with RDNA 4. However, I was told that there were some changes to the architecture. So what I'm uncertain about is whether the information that I received is before or after the internal changes. So again, that's something that is up in the air at the moment. I'm trying to find out a little more information. But what I will say is that I think RDNA 4 will be a very interesting architecture. But I suspect that it's going to be focusing on performance plot and scalability across multiple different iterations for example mobile for example apus for example desktop and nvidia are probably just going to focus purely on the performance crown i don't think they're going to want to lose it i would love to be wrong i would love for amd to just you know rabbit punch nvidia and you know win quote unquote the generation because i think it would be great for competitiveness in the in the desktop marketplace but it's going to be very interesting AMD, though, they have this uh, philosophy, of course, of creating their silicon for as many uses as possible. Obviously, you know, there are the rumors of the PS5 Pro, and uh, at the very least, there's probably going to be a PS6 or whatever, the new uh, Xbox console. And they will inevitably, uh, at least in my opinion, um, go with AMD again with some variant of Zen, some variant of RDNA. So that really is what AMD's whole philosophy is at this point to build an architecture which can scale across multiple different cases with high performance per watt. Anyway, guys, I think that's just about enough uh, rabbiting on from me. Hopefully, you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Uh, leave a like and all of that stuff, and I truly hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye for now.